Liverpool torn country. Yeah? Are you serious? No, I'm not that serious because uh, we, we don't have those things back home. And I don't even know the exact date because we actually have a different calendar. Our calendar is just... Like so you calendar. don't know when your birthday is? No. <laughs> but in Australia, it's on the 14th of February. Where did you show us that? Oh, that's Valentine's Day. Well... Is it? Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, did you choose that? Well, no, nah, it was given to me. Well, well you, that is the luckiest fucking birthday, because on your birthday, you get to be romantic every year. Yeah. If you go out for a drink, yeah. and it's Valentine's Day, yeah. and the girl is out, oh, well, you've got a wife now, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, well, you know what? That's fucking very, very fortuitous. calendar we use? It's, um, it's, it's not really, it's just after the, um, Christ. After Christ yeah. yeah, before Christ, after Christ, so 2000. And, and, yeah. And but you're, but, the, but the Islamic calendar actually is what? 17,000 years or something? No, no, no. Our calendar is 1400 years. 1400? It was from the time that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, um, was met by the angel Gabriel. Was there a date for that? Maybe it was your uh, birthday that happened. <laughs> Who knows? You could be the angel. Yeah. yeah. Maybe not. Uh, well, I mean, look, I was raised a Christian very, very vaguely. Yeah? So I wasn't really a Christian. And, um, you know, I think if there's explosions out in space that are as big as our planet, then I don't know if whether we've any of us have got it figured out, you know? We're so mysterious, it is not funny. So we made these stories to make sense of what it is to be a good person. At the, at the end of the day, isn't it? I think, you know, most of the time, a lot of different people coming from different parts of the world have uh, a lot of similarities. Yeah, there's fundamental yeah, virtues. Yeah, exactly. You know, your point of morality may differ from mine in, in a very minor way, but most of us as human beings, we know that, that we have to treat one another with love and respect. You know, love and respect. Yeah. Kind of thing. And it's literally and taught across the platform. Yeah. You know, in every religion, exactly. every culture. Exactly. So why, why is everyone arguing? <laughs> well, it is the, I would, to be honest, I would put it, I would put the blame on the very um, human, some part of our human nature, uh, you know, yeah. which, which is greed. Yeah, okay. You know, all yep. these wars that you see all across the globe, do you think this is simply, they actually put the blame on the religion? Because they have to find a scapegoat. But it's nothing to do with religion. It's all to do with greed. Yeah. Everyone wants to be... But see, here's the thing about greed, right? If you are that powerful, and you have that much money, can you imagine what you could do in a week with the amount of money they have, Ali? What would you do in a week with that much money? I would do everything I could possibly do. And I would do that for as long as I can. And you know how long I would last before I would get to the point where I've done everything? I reckon a month. So greed can only get you so far. Absolutely. 
So it becomes something more than greed. And you know what I think it is? Power. When you've got everything and you can have anything, it's not greed that makes you want to get it. It's the fact that you know you can get it. And that, and that you can take it away from someone. Yeah, the power to enforce your will onto others. It's, it's a power game. Yeah. You know, a country enforcing its will onto another country is a power game. Yeah. A person trying to influence their thoughts on someone else at a bar or in a church or at home yeah. is a power play. And when someone feels like their ideas are being validated by somebody else, in other words, they agree with me, that means that person's going to do what you say, believe in what you say, agree with what you say. And that feeling of power over that person is corruptible. And it's corrupting. So these cunts in, sorry, these guys in charge, they're not only greedy, they are something else. And maybe the word is um, corrupted. Yeah, of course. In every, uh, uh, well, whether it's a ruler-based yep. society or unruly society, you know, yep. there's always a chain of command. And the guy that actually called the shots at the top uh, never wants to be told nothing. Oh, no. You know, oh. Want to... who, he, who, who's going to tell him or her, him probably, who's going to tell him what to do? Nobody. Nobody exactly. Nobody have the guts to do Exactly. It. They know once they do it, they will have um, they will have a very miserable yeah uh, existence because that society. person who has power over them yeah. can make their life miserable, right? Absolutely. So they're in their pocket. Absolutely. So, so they have, have to, to follow orders. In order to escape such a miserable existence, they compromise the very nature, the very thing that makes them human. Yeah. They, and, but you know what? They have to live with that. You know, these guys in suits who do horrible things, they have nightmares, you know, because going against your nature inside your body is a toxin. And when you sleep is when you're supposed to heal, right? But when you have dreams, that's your mind working shit out. And when you have nightmares, that's your mind saying, there are some fucked up things that you haven't dealt with. And if you've killed someone, or if you've raped someone, or if you've struck someone, or if you've had an argument with someone, your body and your brain will remember and will judge you for it. And you will judge yourself. And you will wake up in the morning feeling either shit or good, depending on what your dreams are reminding you of. Yeah. It's literally the reflection of what we might want to do. Yeah. Or, or what, what we, we wish had done. Yes. Or what we wish had done before. You know, and it's also, a, in some ways, I believe, a, a step for us to sort of, as we wake up from that dream, to sort of look up. You know, look at our life in the past and look at our steps in the future. Man, you're a philosopher. Honest, this is the honest truth. You know? You're a philosopher. This conversation we've had yeah. is gold. You know what I mean? That, this conversation is worth a lot of money. It's brilliant. You are very interesting. Um, Ali, I haven't really thought about it like that. Yeah. And of everyone, uh, most people in India that got their dreams. And of course, we all do. Pleasant. We all do. Some of them pleasant and some of them, you know, very uh, not pleasant. Yeah. You know, and I 
think they're both uh, something that we can use exactly. to better ourselves as human beings. Yeah. yeah. And do you know when you've got it right, I reckon? You know what, Ali? I don't have dreams anymore. I don't have any dreams. I don't have nightmares. I don't have pleasant dreams. I just go to sleep and I black out and I wake up in the morning and my life has become my dream. Do you know what I mean? Well, life itself is a dream. Yeah, well, it in is. In some ways. In ways, it is, yeah. In some ways, it is a dream because... Life is only a dream. We are the imagination of, our, our imagine of ourselves. Our existence is one of the hardest topics that philosopher, philosophers and theologians and so many other great minds have discussed for centuries. Yep. And yet we still continue to have difficulty to understand our existence. You know? And this, this is a, uh, a journey that will continue on in the future. You know, people will still try to seek answers. Always. Yeah. Yeah. Always seek answers in relation to what is really the, yeah. the reason of our existence as human beings. Yeah. You know, and some people believe that there is a life after death. Some people don't. You know, and I respect that. I think having a... You know, if there is a, there is a scientist and a philosopher what that actually that? talks about the power of our mind and body. Yeah. You know, it's actually a lot better than so many medications because there are over, I think, 70 trillion individual cells in our body that work clockwise to heal and to repair the damages that we do while we are while we are awake. You know, sleep is the big healer. You know that? Because you, you people who don't it. sleep, you know, they get all this wrong about drugs. Yeah. It's not drugs that fucks them up. It's the fact that when they take drugs, they don't sleep. So my brother is a, was a drug addict. He's all right now. He was mentally ill. He's all right now. Um, and we all thought it was drugs. We all thought he was crazy. We all thought he had issues. He does. But when it came to the crunch, the one thing that would send him off the rails is when he'd go on a bender and drink and take drugs and not sleep. So I tried this myself. I took a whole bunch of drugs all night, all night, and I tried to stay up as long as possible because everyone was saying to me, you're losing your mind, Josh. That's my real name. Yeah. And um, I said, I'll prove that I'm not. So I did it. And you know what happened? fell asleep. Eventually, your body will fall asleep. Of course. And that's when the healing begins. And when you don't dream anymore, like I do, your life is your dream. And you can actually do whatever you want. It's called opesh. Have you heard of that word? Yeah. Um, I haven't heard of that word, but it's actually quite an interesting word. I look at... What is it? You like can't, opesh? because I made it up. Opesh. Opesh. It's when you... You create your own reality by meeting fate halfway. Right? That's a very, um, very interesting. Uh, you project your own reality. Yeah, absolutely. When you stop dreaming and fix the things in your life that you're dreaming about, yeah. and forgive yourself for the things that you've done, and mend those bridges, yeah. and it's like going through a fucking thirteen-step program, right? When you do all of that, you heal yourself and you heal relationships. And you stop dreaming, and then your life becomes a dream. It sounds crazy, but well, in some ways it makes sense. Pleasure. What's your details? What's your details? I'll give you the number. Yeah, give me a number. I'll stop recording now. But you know that conversation we had.